uh, high students. Now we will study slide four of our PowerPoint presentation. The file name is interfacing peripheral fuzzle. That I will share this slide with you. So we will study a simple bus. So what are the bus? Bus is a way to communicate the data from microprocessor to memory. So bus consists of wires. Wires can be unidirectional or bidirectional. So in this example, this is a bus. It is unidirection. It is the direction is from microprocessor to memory, and its width is one. It means it represent a single line. And this is another bus that is bidirectional. So one line represent a single line or multiple lines. So now this is a single line and this is multiple line that consists of 16 wires this bus is bidirectional and the width of the bus is 16 bits so if you look at this figure microprocessor is interfaced with memory using three buses the name of the first bus is read slash right bar the name of the second bus is address lines and the name of the third bus is data lines the first bus read right bar is unidirectional and the direction is from microprocessor to memory similarly this second line this bus is an address bus it is unidirectional the direction is from microprocessor to memory and it consists of 16 lines so and the third bus that is the data bus that is bidirectional and the direction can be in both ways the direction can be from microprocessor to memory or from memory to microprocessor so who will determine the direction of data bus so the direction of the data bus will be determined by read write bar signal so if read write bar signal is one it means it is a read operation if read write bar is zero it means it is a write operation so in read operation the direction of the data bus will be from memory to microprocessor in this case that will be determined by the read write bar signal if read write bar signal is zero then the direction of the data will be from microprocessor to memory so in this example in this particular case microprocessor will be writing the data to memory so bus is represented by wires it can be unidirectional that is or bidirectional this one is unidirectional this one is unidirectional this one is bidirectional and in bus one line represent multiple wires it can be an address bus this one is an address bus the second one is data bus and the third one is control bus this read write bar is a control bus that will determine the direction of data so so now i will now illustrate this with an example let's assume that we have a memory in memory so these are the contents of the data of memory so we assume we assume now that address lines in 16 bits so address lines is 16 bits and the data bus size is also 16 bits and we know that and now this is the address 
of the memory and this is the contents of the memory at an address 1000 this represent this represent and what is dollar sign dollar sign represent a hexa decimal notation so this dollar sign represent a hexa decimal notation so this is an address 1000 so if you look at the data bus so the address bus is 1000 so this one is 16 bits so this the address of this will be 0001 and all the remaining will be 00000000 and 0000 so if we want to access the data so microprocessor generate a signal dollar 100 so it means it will access the data from the memory and the data content is dollar ab12 read write bar is one it means it microprocessor want to perform a read operation so when read write bar is one read write bar is one so it means it's a <coughs> read operation microprocessor give an address what is the address the address is dollar 1000 so this means that this data will be read from the memory and this data will be available on the data bus so when the address is dollar 1000 so the data will now contain a b 1 so so when the address is dollar 100 read write bar is one it means it's a read operation so the data bus direction will be from memory to microprocessor the data will be read from memory and we will be provided to the microprocessor so what will be the data bus value the value of the data bus will be dollar ab12 this value is in hexadecimal and if you want to if you want to convert it to binary so the code for a is 1010 the code for b is 1011 the code for 1 is 0001 and the code for 2 is 00 10 so now the direction of the data will be decided by the signal read write bar when read write bar is 1 the direction will be from memory to microprocessor so counterwise that if microprocessor generate an address 1002 it means microprocessor want to perform an operation on this address read write bar is 0 it means it is now a write operation so the data bus direction will be from microprocessor to memory so the data will be provided now by microprocessor let's assume that this data that is provided by the microprocessor microprocessor wants to write dollar 3612 so if the address is dollar 1002 it means that this data will be overwritten it's a write operation so the direction will be from microprocessor to the memory so the data bus direction will be from microprocessor to the memory and what will be the data bus value so the data bus value in this particular example is dollar 3612 so microprocessor wants to write this data these are the old contents of the data this old contents will be overwritten with the new value and the new value is now dollar 3612 2 so this address will be overwritten and since it's a write operation so the old contents of memory will be overwritten by the new contents so now we will study timing diagram what is a timing diagram timing diagram is a method for describing communication protocol it describes the method for communication protocol between two different devices for instance if we interface microprocessor and memory then the timing diagram or timing protocol is a method for describing communication between memory and microprocessor 
in time equal ground is determined and on from a timeline so now this is a timeline and the timeline is a line from left to right so there may be different time events time instance let's assume time t1 time t2 or time t3 so this is a time line so now in our previous example we have different type of signals read write bar if read write bar is zero it means now read write bar is zero it means that now it's a read write bar the value of read write bar is zero that means it's a read operation and enable is a signal date if if it's one we can perform either a read operation or a write operation but when enable is zero for memory when we cannot perform neither or we, we cannot uh, we can neither perform a read operation or a write operation so now let's assume that we have a memory and at an address dollar 200 the content of this address is 5612 so the value 5612 is stored at an address 2000 note that this hex this dollar sign represent a hexadecimal value so this implies that an address 2000 the value stored is 5612 now when microprocessor wants to communicate with the memory and wants to read this value it will first provide an address dollar 2000 on the address line so this value dollar 2000 is provided to the memory at time t1 and in time t2 the enable signal will rise from 0 to 1 so it's a control signal so the control signal can either be a low or a high so this value is low at this point and it is high at this point it can be active or inactive during this point it is inactive during this point it is active and during this time period it is inactive so microprocessor want to perform a read operation on the memory at an address dollar 2000 so it means that the address 2000 is be provided on the address lines the enable signal will be high at time t2 and memory will provide the data now this is the memory will provide this data the dollar 5612 on the data bus so the time interval between that microprocessor makes a request at its time t2 to the memory and to the time when the data becomes available is called as the memory latency so the latency of this memory is now t latency so t latency is now equal to t2 minus t1 so it means that at time t2 microprocessor makes a request to memory to read the data and the data is 5612 and memory will provide this data on the data bus <coughs> sorry this is time t3 so microprocessor makes a request at time t2 memory will provide this data at time t3 so the actual memory latency will be t3 minus t2 so at time t2 microprocessor makes a request and time t3 data becomes available on the bus okay so now we will study the timing diagram for a write operation so when it is read write read bar right read bar right is 1 so if read bar right is 1 it implies a write operation because the bar is on the read and if read bar right is 0 it means it is a 
read operation. So when read write bar is one, it means that microprocessor wants to perform a write operation. So if it is one, it wants to perform a write operation at an address dollar three zero zero. At an address dollar three zero zero, the value of this address or the content of this memory location is one two b one. And microprocessor wants to overwrite this value. So if it asserts or assert the signal read write bar to one, it means it wants to perform a write operation at which address dollar three zero zero zero. And the data that microprocessor wants to write is dollar seven six one two. So the direction of the data will be from microprocessor to memory, and the new data is seven six one two. And enable signal is one. So if enable signal is one, it means microprocessor can either perform a read operation or a write operation. Write operation or a read operation. But when enable signal is zero so you cannot perform neither a read operation nor a write operation on the memory location so in this particular example microprocessor wants to write this data 7612 the old value will be overwritten with a new value that is dollar 7612 and this data will be overwritten at time t2 because every device has some delay so microprocessor provide this data to the memory and this map data is available on the data bus <coughs> on the ports on the ports on the data port when this data becomes available at the data bus so it will be written to memory after some time data dollar 7612 will be written to memory at some point t2 so the latency of the memory the latency of the memory is now t2 minus t1 at time t1 enable signal is asserted and at time t2 a write operation is Now we will study the basic protocol concept highlighted in slide seven of our presentation. So we will define actors. There are two roles of actor: a master role or a slave role. Master will initiate the request. Master initiates. request and slave respond to dead request i will explain this with an example let's assume that microprocessor is interfaced with memory so microprocessor is an active device so it will act as a master and memory will act as a slave microprocessor initiate a request microprocessor will initiate the request by providing a signal for instance read bar write actor we want microprocessor want to perform a write operation on the slave or a read operation and it will also enters circuits with signal enable these two type of signals are called as control signals in addition microprocessor will provide an address and the data will be transmitted by the slave so what is an address address specifies a location in memory as we mentioned in the previous slide or it may like for instance if you are using if you say that move 
or three dollar one two three four so now this in this case we are using in absolute addressing mode so it means that my microprocessor will read the data from the memory at an address and that data will be stored into the register r3 so this address can be a location in memory like for this instance this is a location in memory like let's assume this is a memory and each memory has an address let's assume dollar one zero zero so this can be an address in location in memory or it can be a peripheral it can be a peripheral device or it can be a register within a peripheral the type example of register within the peripheral a register may contain uh, a peripheral may contain various register for instance status register control register or data register within a peripheral so microprocessor will act as a master device the memory will act as a slave device microprocessor will instruct the slave to perform either a read operation or a write operation the read operation will be a write operation this operation will be specified by read write read bar write signal or enable signal so if enable signal is one microprocessor will either perform a read or write operation and that read write operation will be performed on an address and the direction of the data will be determined by read bar write signal so if write bar signal is zero it means a read operation so the data will direction will be from memory to microprocessor and if it's one it means it's a write operation so the data will be written from the microprocessor to the memory now we will study a time multiplexing <coughs> so what is time multiplexer time multiplexing in time multiplexing we share single set of wires for multiple pieces of data and it saves wire at expense of time i'll explain this with example Now let's assume that we have a master. Now it's a master, and our example, the master is microprocessor, and now we have a slave, and that slave is memory. Now. Within this master and slave, there is one signal that is request, and another signal that is data. So now let's assume that the size of this data bus is. Eight bits. The size of this data bus is eight bits, and we want to read a sixteen bit of data from memory. So let's assume in memory, we want to read some sixteen bits of data. So this data is stored in memory. So this is data. Oh, okay. Let's assume that we have some memory. Now this is our memory, and at this address, this address, there is some data. So now we also have some address lines. Address lines, and at that address, there is 16 bit of data. This is an address. And what at what particular address there is some data, and this data is from B15, B14 up to B08, and B07, B06 up to B00. So if we see at this address, so the total data bus is. 
16 bits. However, the size of the data bus in this example is 8 bits. So we cannot transfer the 16 bit of data on an 8 bit bus. So what we have to do? We have to do time multiplexing. So now if you look at this data, so this is is 8 bit of data and also this is an 8 bit of data. So we can divide the data into two parts. One is the most significant part and another is least significant part. And we can send this data at alternate time interval. So I will this, give this very an example. So now let's assume. So in this example, microprocessor will make a request. So now the request is one. And now the request is one. So if this is a request signal, microprocessor make a request. This is request is one, it is active. And the request is one. So microprocessor makes a request and it will send an additional control signal that will send it okay data type so if data type dt if dt is 1 it means that microprocessor will read the most significant part msp most significant part and if dt is equal to 0 microprocessor will read the least significant part so in this case we have a dt signal and in this dt signal is one let's assume this is zero at this point and now this is one at this point okay and my processor wants to read the data so this is an address let's assume this address is dollar one zero 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 so this address is dollar one zero 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 my processor wants to read some data and it has to read this data on this data lines however this data lines is limited this is an 8 bit of data and we want to read 16 bit of data from microprocessor so now what will be the data bus so this is data bus so what will be the value of the data bus and the data bus when dt is equal to 0 dt is equal to 0 we have to read the least significant part so this is the least significant part so at this point the data bus will contain the data that, that will be read from the this is b07 to b00 b07 to b00 and in this point the data that will be read by microprocessor is the most significant part dt is 1 dt is 1 it is 0 so the data that will be read by microprocessor is b15 to b08 so this is an 8 bit of data and if you look it microprocessor make a request at this point that is t1 and the data becomes available at this point that is t2 this is the latency of the memory similarly microprocessor make a request at t3 and the data becomes available at t4 so this is the latency of memory and this data bus is shared this data bus is shared among is, is shared at two different time instants for the first time we transfer this data and at the second time instant we transfer this data Now we will study the time multiplexing when a bus is shared among address and data. So we have four type of bus. One is enable. When enable is one, Microsoft can either perform a read or write operation. And this bus can be shared across both the address and the data. And the signal that will determine 
that whether this bus will transport an address or data depending upon a add slash data signal so it means add slash data bar signal so if it is zero add sorry it's add bar so if add bar data is zero so it means that this data bus will transport an address if this signal a double d bar data signal is one so the bus the bus will transport the bus will carry data the bus will carry i will elaborate this with an example so now enable is one so it means microprocessor want to perform an operation so enable is active during this time and enable is active during this time since a d double bar data signal is zero during this time so the bus will carry the bus will carry this bus will carry an address and since during this time the a double d bar slash zero signal is one so it means the bus during this time will carry data, data. so now let's assume that we want to read the value from memory at an address dollar one zero 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 so we want to read this value from memory so this is a value and now this is an address but we have a single bus in the previous example we had a separate bus and a separate address bus and a set, separate data bus but now in this example we have only a single bus and this bus can either be used by an address or the data or the value so now when this signal is zero so this bus will carry an address that is an address color 100 and if this value is one so this bus will carry the data so it is the time multiplexing of the bus during this different time so at this time the bus will carry an address and during this time period the bus will carry a data so the bus is shared among an address bus or the data <coughs> bus it is the time multiplexing of bus either by an address or by data so now we will study two type of protocols in which a master that will determine the communication between the master and the slave device the master can be a microprocessor and the slave can be any other peripheral io device or memory so we will study two type of protocol one is referred to as stroke protocol and another another protocol is referred to as handshake protocol the stroke protocols requires two type of signal one is a request signal and the other is data while the handshake protocol will require three signals one is request another is acknowledge and another is data so now in stroke protocol the master will initiate a request a master will initiate a request to the slave at time t1 so now this is time t1 and at time t1 microprocessor or the master initiates request to 
slave at time t1 and at time to 2 t2 this this is a time t2 at time t2 the slave will put the data on the data bus so at time t2 slave puts the data on the data bus so at time t2 the slave so at time t1 master initiate a request at time t1 at time t2 slave puts the data on the data bus now what will happen at time t3 master will receive the data and at time t3 master at time t3 this t3 the master will receive the data and puts a request line to low so what will happen at time t4 this uh, at time t4 at time t4 servant is able to receive new data let's assume a scenario that microprocessor wants to read some data for the slave and that data a value is 1 2 5 a in hexadecimal once more so microprocessor will make a request the request will be 0 at this point it will at time t1 the request will be high at time t slave will put this data on the data bus and the data bus is 1 2 5a so now this data is internal to the slave device this data will be made available on the data bus at time t2 so the data bus so now the data is internal to the slave device this will be available on the data bus 1 2 5 2 at time t2 at time t3 the master will receive this data master receive this data and puts it line to low so my the master will receive this data so the data will now become the new data that is available to the master is now 1 2 5a is here and because it has received the data it no longer need to request the device so at this point it will make a request point uh, and at this point it received the data it received the data so this data is received at time t3 this data is received at time t3 and the request signal will be low now because the data is under being received and now at time t4 at time t4 the master can initiate a new request for a new data so at time t4 so now let's give at time t4 then the request will be one it will receive some new data maybe the data is 1 5 6 b this is the new data and so forth so on so this type of protocol is referred to as stroke protocol so the latency of the slave device the latency of the slave device is now t2 minus t1 so t 2 minus t1 this is so this is the latency of the device latency of the slave device or so latency of the slave device is t2 minus t1 at time t1 my master places the request and at time t2 the data becomes available so this is the latency of the slave device the another type of protocol that now we will study is a handshake protocol and now there are four different time instances so at time t1 the master initiate request to slave so master initiates request to slave at time t. so now this is time t1 so 
So this is time T1. Master initiated request to the slave. And a time T2. So time T2, slave puts data on the bus and assert signal acknowledge. So time T2 now. This is time T2. This is time T2. Time T2 and time T2. So now let's assume it's in the same example. Let's assume that this slave has some data 1, 2, 5, A. So time T1, the master will assert the request signal. At time T2, slave response. Slave, slave will put the data on the bus and that data is now 1, 2, 5, A will be available on the bus. And in addition, the acknowledge signal will be set to 1. The acknowledge signal will be set to 1 at time T2. So master will receive this data. So now this data is now on the data bus. So master will receive this data and will latch this data 1, 2, 5, A will be latch at time T3. So master receive this data and at time t4 the servant is ready to receive new data i will explain this with an example let's assume that i am in the class and I am making a request to a student at time T1. I ask at time T1, okay, what's your name? So now this is, let's do at time T1, I ask a question, what's your name? I ask a student, what's your name? And at time T2, the student raises his hand, raises his hand, okay, raises his hand. So raises his hand, raises his hand. And so it means that he has acknowledged my request and answers me that okay, my name is Gore. So this is a time T2. T3, okay. I receive this data, okay. Then I say, okay, I acknowledge this data, okay. Now your name is Gore, so I, just, I acknowledge. And then at time T4, the servant is ready to receive new data. Then I may ask another, another questions. It was your role number and so forth, so on. So this will happen at time T4 and so forth, so on. So in strong protocol, require two signals, while the handshaking protocol requires three signals. It requires three signals. The handshaking protocol is used for the device which has variable latency and the stroke protocol is used for devices which has fixed latency. Yeah. Okay, so now we will study a stroke handshake compromise when a master device is interfaced with a servant or a slave device and there will be three types of signal, request, wait or data. So the request signal is asserted by the, micro by the master device to notify the servant that I want some data. So request signal is asserted by the mic master to the servant or slave to notify that I want some data. The wait signal is asserted by the slave device to notify the master that okay wait for some time. At this point of time I am not able to service your request and you have to wait for the data. And the data lines, it means that the data is now provided by the slave to the micro, uh, to the master device. 
So now we will study this with a timeline. So this is your timeline. A time t1, t2, t3, and t4. So if you look at this thing for the whole time, the wait signal is zero or low. It means it okay. The servant is not busy in serving some other request, and it can directly provide the data. So at time t1. The master assert the signal request. The request signal is now one at this point, and the slave will provide this data at time two. So at this point, master initiate request. At time t two, slave provides. data on the data bus at time 3 because now the master have latched the data so the master latch data and puts its request signal to low and it means that the request has been now serviced and at time t4 the servant is able to service Another request. Now we will see a scenario that the slave is not able to provide the data at the time and is busy in some other request. So in this case, the wait signal will be asserted. So now we will study this scenario in the following timeline. So now we have a new timeline. In the scenario, in the previous example, the device was not busy in serving some. Uh, the, the, the device was free. The slave device was free, and now in the new scenario, the slave device is busy in serving some other request, and it cannot process the request simultaneously. So now we will study this timeline. That now. At time, let's do this. Is time t one? Master makes a request, and in response, the device puts a signal. Wait. Wait means that okay, the wait signal is high. So now this is a wait signal, and it's one. Wait signal is high. It means. Then wait is one. It means that the servant is not able to service this request, and the master has to slave for some, has to wait for some time. So after when the when the wait signal is low, it means that okay now at time t one, now at time t one. The master initiate the request. At time t two, <coughs> this is time t two. This is time t two. The servant notify the master that I am not able to service your request at this point, and you had to wait for some time. So this time, and at time t three, <coughs> at time t three, this is time t three. The servant device or the slave device deasserts its wait signal. It means that now the data is available by the slave. So in this case, the data at this point will be available, and it will put the data on the data bus. So now let's assume that this data is one, two, three. Four. It will put the data on the data bus. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now we will study this straw handshake compromise. The master initiate the request at time t one by asserting the signal request at time t one. At time t two, the servant or the slave notifies the master that I am not able to process. Your request at this point, 
एंड नाउ यू हैव टू वेट फॉर सर्टेन टाइम एंड टाइम टी थ्री द डेटा नाउ बिकम्स अवेलेबल ऑन द डेटा बस इट पुट्स द डेटा ऑन द डेटा बस एट टाइम टी थ्री This data is latched by the master at time t4. So this data is latched by the by time t4. So at time t4, the master will put its request line to low at time t4, and then at time t5, the servant will be able to process. a new request so there are two types of scenarios two scenarios scenario one with a fast response time with a fast response time by the slave fast response time by the slave in which the wait signal is zero for the entire time duration and now this is scenario 2 this is now scenario Two. Which has a slow response time in which the wait signal is asserted for a specific time duration. Now this wait signal is asserted for a specific time duration. That it means that now the servant is not able to service this request, and the microprocessor has to wait some for some. Uh, the microprocessor has to wait for some time. So the microprocessor has to wait for this amount of clock cycle. So the number of clock cycles, maybe if it's the clock, so it means you know these are the clocks. So then microprocessor has to wait for one clock cycle, two clock cycle, and three clock cycle. So now we will study how different I/O devices, input I/O devices, are interfaced by with the microprocessor. There are two types of interfacing. One is referred to as board-based I/Os, and the other is referred to as bus-based I/Os. In board-based I/O, microprocessor communicates with the I/O through its ports. So it means that okay, now let's assume this is I/O device one. I/O device one. So I/O device one is interfaced with microprocessor through port zero, and now this is let's assume that I/O device two. I/O device two is interfaced with microprocessor through port two, and this is I/O device. This is I/O device zero. I/O device one. I/O device one and I/O device. Three. So, how many devices are there? There are four I/O devices. Zero is interfaced with port zero. I/O device one is interfaced with port one. I/O device two is interfaced with port two, and I/O device three is interfaced with port three. If you want to read the data from I/O device zero, so which assembly we should use? We should use like this. Move. R three P zero. So now this, let's assume this is an input device. Input device. So the data from this device will be moved into the register R three. Let's assume this I/O device is an output device. And the assembly for this will be like this move because it is an output device. So we have to move P1 port one is the destination and three five. So we are moving a constant value of three five like dollar three five constant value of three five into the device P1 and this device is an output device. Another type of interfacing is called as bus-based I/O, in which microprocessor is inter can be used to interface with to respond A devices to respond. It means that microprocessor can let's assume that if the address lines is eight bits and data lines is eight bits, so microprocessor.
is able to access tourist for a devices in this particular example is a so tourist for a microprocessor will be able to access 256 devices and the size of each device is in bits because the deadline is h so now in this example in port based io if we want to interface four devices now we are want to interface four devices each of eight bits how many pins we require eight eight pins eight pins and eight pins so total number of pins required will be 32 pins while in this bus space io we can interface 256 devices and the number of pins required will be 8 plus 8 8 plus 8 is equal to 16 plus 1 so total number of pins required are 17 but in this device a unique address in bus based io a unique address is assigned to each io device now for instance what is the address so now let's assume that in this example this can be used to connect to 56 devices so each device will be assigned a unique address let's assume this is device 0 device 1 up to device 255 the data size of each device will be 8 bits the first device will have an address of 0, the second device will have an address of 1 and the last device will have an address of 255. So in this scenario, when you have to access the device, you have to provide both the address, you have to mention the address of that particular device. So will, what will be the assembly for this device if you want to read the data? So now let's assume if you want to read the data from device 1 what you have to do you have to do move r3 you have to move r3 r3 is your destination and at n address 1 so you want to read the data the data from an address 1 and address 1 contain the address of the device of the device 1 so you have to mention so this is the address of device 1 and the addressing mode that we are using is absolute or direct addressing mode <coughs> so now we will study parallel io in parallel io microprocessor can be interfaced with memory and can also be interfaced with different type of io devices so now let's assume and this memory is connected with the system bus and the parallel io device is also connected with the system bus let's assume that we want to interface a memory and three io devices these devices is device d1 device d2 and device d3 Device T1 is connected with port A of the parallel I.O. device. Device and this parallel I.O. is a special device that can be interfaced with multiple devices. So, device T1 is connected to port A of parallel I.O. Device T2 is connected to port B of parallel I.O. And device T3 is connected to port C of parallel IO. Similarly, each register is associated with a particular port. So, this parallel IO will contain three register. Register A will hold the data 
that has to be transferred to or from the IO devices. Register B will hold the data that has to be transferred to device to or from device D2 that needs to be communicated with device D3. So now this is the memory map. This is the memory map of this type of architecture. In this type of architecture, so the memory, let's say this is an example memory map. So if the address ranges from 0000 to 7FFF, all these values are in hexadecimal. So if the address is 0536, it means that this belongs to memory. If the address is dollar five six two one, this also belongs to a memory location. And this <coughs> register A has been assigned a unique address. So register A has been assigned at an address of eight zero zero zero. In this particular example, register B is assigned with an address of 8001 and register C is assigned with an address of 8002. Let's assume that if we want to transfer some uh, data to device T1 and let's assume that this device T1 is an output device. This is an output device. We want to write some data to this device. So what should be the assembly instruction the assembly instruction will be like this move device d1 so we have to write some data move r3 so sorry move dollar 8000 we are using absolute addressing mode and r3 so let's assume r3 is a register of a microprocessor r3 is a register of a microprocessor and that has some value of 5 1 one zero. So this data from R3 will be moved into red A. This five one one zero will be moved, and this. And now let's assume that microprocessor wants to read some data from the device D3. D3 will provide its data on port C that will be stored in register C. Let's assume that the value in this register C is dollar one two five a. So if we want to read the data from this device, what will be the assembly is instruction? So now it means we will say move R1. R1 is some register of a microprocessor. And what is the address of register C? The address of register C is dollar eight zero zero two. So uh, let's assume that this R one is some register of a microprocessor, and the initial data is zero 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 zero. Microprocessor wants to read from this device D three. D three will provide this data in register R C, and this data is one two five a. The old value will be overwritten, and now the new data will be one two five. A. Now we will study another type of IO device that we call as extended parallel IO. Extended parallel IO. Extended parallel I O. So now how this will look like now this is a microprocessor microprocessor it is interfaced with uh, port 0 port 0 port 1 port 2 and port 3 This port 3 is connected with parallel IO extended parallel IO and this is now connected with port A port B and port C. Now if you look 
in this example let's assume that the size of all ports are 8 bits this is 8 bit data this is 8 bit data this is also 8 bit data and this is also an 8 bit data this is an 8 bit data 8 bit data and 8 bit data so one the limitation of this microprocessor like processor this processor the limitation of this processor is that that it is able to connect only four ports but the problem is that that we want to interface it with six ports so this is port 1 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 devices so we want to we want to connect six devices with this microprocessor and they cannot be connected without using this extended parallel io so extended parallel io provide you a mechanism to extend more devices with the microprocessor so now let's assume that you, if you want to connect eight devices we want to connect eight devices with the microprocessor and this extended parallel IO only provide a connection to three devices so how we can do it like this so we can connect this port 2 with another extended parallel IO extended parallel IO and connect it with port D port E and port F So how many devices now we can connect with the microprocessor in this scenario? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And if we want to connect more devices, so we can also connect it with the extended IP and so forth. So, so now we will study a memory map IO in which the memory address space is partitioned into two parts this is part one part one and this is referred to as part two so this part of the address space is reserved to for the memory and this part of an address is reserved for IO devices. So how we so by 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 looking at the address, we can identify that whether this is an address of a memory device or an IO device. For instance, if the address is 6521, 6521, so this lies within this address space, it means that this is the address of a memory location. And if the address is 9261, this implies that this is an address of an IO device. So, in memory map IO, the address space is partitioned between uh, the memory and the IO device, in which some part of the address space is reserved for the memory and some part of the address space is reserved for the IO devices. And various examples of the IO devices can be like let's assume this is a device d1 this device may be an 8 leds which is an output device and let's assume this an address dollar 8001 may refer to for device d2 and they may be referred to some switches so if if we mention the address 8000 it means that microprocessor wants to uh, write some data on the LED and if we mention the address 8001 so microprocessor wants to read some data from these switches and there are 8 switches um, maybe connected in part of so this is an example of a memory map. Hmm. I don't know.